Okay, good morning, gentlemen. Welcome uh, to course IWCF uh, level four, well intervention. Uh, so, uh, inshallah, I will start to introduce myself uh, before we start. Uh, I am uh, engineer uh, Hani Zaid uh, from uh, Cairo, Egypt. Uh, I have experience in oil field uh, around uh, 14 uh, years. Uh, I started my job in Balaim Petroleum Company in Egypt as a company man or supervisor in drilling and supervisor rig uh, for six years. Then I uh, switched to Saudi Arabia. I worked uh, in Saudi Aramco for six years as rig foreman supervisor in drilling uh, rigs. Uh, I started my career in uh, training uh, in 2012. I'm accredited and certified from IWCF uh, as uh, well control uh, assessors and instructors and also well uh, intervention instructor uh, for cold tubing stamping operation war line and also for IDC. Uh, that's uh, only from my side. Uh, before we start, uh, Mr. Khawar, please introduce yourself, your name, years for experience, job title. This is first time to take this course or not? Go ahead, please. Mr. Khawar, could you introduce yourself, please? Uh, yes. Uh, my name is Khawar Mushtaq, and uh, uh, I'm a senior fuel engineer at Sprint Oil and Gas Services, and I'm working uh, since seven years. Uh, I have completed uh, my engineering in 2013. Uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, yeah. So uh, currently I'm working in coil tubing and through tubing department in Sprint Oil and Gas Services. Okay, this is the first time for you attending this course? Uh, I'm attending the, uh, I'm attending it second time. Uh, I've cleared the IWCF level four in 2018, uh, which was valid till 2020 December. Okay. So now I'm attending in again 2021. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Harun, go ahead, please. Hey, my name is Harun Rashid. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. My name is Harun Rashid. I'm working as a field engineer in Sprint Oil and Gas. It's been th three years I've been working in this organization, and uh, the, this is the first time I've been conducted this session. So, your job title is drilling engineer? No, I'm field engineer. Field engineer called tubing? Yeah, in coil tubing. The ah. training was the past. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, inshallah, we'll start to uh, share our presentation. So, this is the slides for the presentation. You can see, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we already start for this one and uh, some logistics about the course. Inshallah, this course will start according to time for Iraq, uh, for sorry, for uh, Pakistan. It will be 11.30 a.m. For six hours, it will end by uh, 17.30, okay? For total hours, it will be six hours, including lunch break and coffee break. Our lunch break, inshallah, it will be uh, 1.30, 13.30, 1 o'clock and 30. For half hour, then we have short another short break for coffee uh, for 15 minutes, okay? This is the official time and we can uh, adjust according to our uh, course. Uh, uh, course material is you. You have uh, three exercise book, one for completion operation, and one for completion equipment, one for cold tubing, and you have formula sheet equations for uh, IWCF, and also you have this presentation, okay? You need your passport or ID identification during the exam, inshallah, day. What is the course objective? The course objective here, gentlemen, is, let me start like this, okay? It's better now, right? Yeah. Okay. Course objective first to increase candidates who attend this course operation knowledge for well intervention processing and well control procedure, especially we talk here for coil tubing part, which is optional 
to choose for this course. Second objective to prepare candidates for the final well control uh, or well intervention examination. You will have three separate exams, one for compression equipment, one for compression operation, and one for cold tube. You need to get for each uh, section 70%. This is the minimum requirement to pass and get certificate. The certificates uh, will be valid for two years and you need to renew after two years, inshallah. Okay, this is the course content according to the IWCF. You have two sections mandatory you will take, you must take, like completion operation CO. This is mandatory for all levels. Completion equipment CE. So you have two exams now. And the third one is optional. You can choose between cold tubing or line and Islamic population. Three of them or two or at least one uh, optional to choose. Here you choose cold tubing uh, part. So you have three separate exams for three content for the course. Course outline, inshallah, it will be day number one today. We'll talk about completion operations, CO, the first part. We'll go through well control and barrier definition, physics calculation and formula, how to kill the well during well intervention if we need. Tomorrow, inshallah, we'll talk about compression equipment part. Day number three and four, it will be cold tubing for well intervention, the section for cold tubing. Day number four, it will be including revisions and some questions here in class. To be ready for day number five, it will be Friday, it will be final online exam. Here, the first section is completion operation or CO, refer to CO. Most of us is working in rig site or well site or rigless operation, so we know about kick situation and the blowout situation. So we'll start to introduce or make definition for the kick situation. That means there is influx of formation fluid. This formation fluid can be water. It can be oil or it can be gas coming inside the well pour and start the well, cause the well start to flow. So your hydrostatic head below than the formation pressure, it is condition called under balance situation. The formation pressure here is higher than the hydrostatic heat for the fluid inside the wheel pool. This is the kick situation and it's still under control. You can control the wheel by closing surface BOB to control the wheel and recording the build up pressures. The second definition is talking about what is the flow out. The flow out is the uncontrolled exit of the formation fluid reaching to the surface without control. So you have delay to shut in the well. You try to shut in the well by surface BUB without success. That means there is escape for hydrocarbons at the surface, especially if it's gas, which is the more dangerous fluid to, uh, to act with. So now it is called the flow out. Usually, according to the uh, study, 10% only from the kick situation, it can convert to the blue out if you don't take the correct procedure or correct action, okay? After that, we'll start to have some questions here, talking about what is the problem for will intervention can happen. So first the question, according to will control, what kind of will surface? Will surface the same name for will intervention operation? Disaster could happen by pressure, so it will be the flow out at the surface. What can cause the flow out? It is the barrier failure. You have failed on the barrier like BOB at the surface to control the well. What is the equipment used to control the flow or flow out from the well? It is barrier and it must be tested barrier. It is past the, the requirement for testing or the criteria for the testing requirement. What is the failure definition? Any device or fluid or substance that prevent flow from the wheel pool. It can be fluid, hydrostatic head for the prime, or it can be device like the BOB, bridge plug, cement retainer, any piece for equipment that can hold the flow or the pressure from the well. 
The next slide will talk about what is the barrier classification according to the will intervention operation. Okay, you know the will intervention operation, usually we work under pressure. So if you need to work under pressure, you need more barriers to be inside the will pool to use, in during, to use during the operation. In this case, we have three classification for the will barrier. First one will, will said as primary barrier. It is the first defense against the pressure for the will. And usually it is sealing barrier. That means the seal around the pipe or wire line or cold tubing. If you take example for cold tubing, so what is the primary barrier for cold tubing? Stripper. It will be, sorry? Stripper. Stripper. Stuffing box. Be the stuffing box or the stripper, packing element, sealing around the cold tubing during uh, operation, uh, dynamic and static operation. If you have failure in the primary barrier, we'll go to use the secondary barrier, which is the second defense system against the will pressure. And also it is sealing barrier used to seal around the cold tubing, for example. In this case, it will be the blowout preventer or the quiet VOB. You will close the slip and pipe ramp to seal the pressure from the well. If you have failure in post barrier, so you have tertiary or another option, which is called tertiary barrier. This used only in case of emergency, in case of both primary and secondary barrier has been failed or compromised. This has ability to shear the pipe or the wire line. In case of cold tubing, you have shear seal above the well head or the Christmas tree. So usually because you're working under pressure, you need to have three barriers in place, not like drilling, while drilling, you, you're drilling under control, over balance. So you need to have two barriers like hydrostatic for the mud plus the BUB at the depth. According to the API, American Petroleum Institute requirement, minimum two tested barrier in place regarding the pipe for the operation or the well head pressure. But in well intervention for safety, we take three barrier in place uh, to control the well because you are working under pressure. And this is the main advantage for the well intervention operation. Clear, gentlemen? Uh, Hannah, I, Hannah, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, can you go to the previous slide? Okay, here, here. Uh, okay, uh, you have written that the primary barrier is always a seal barrier. If it's a hydrostatic, then uh, there is no seal. So in most of the time when you are drilling, uh, so hydrostatic or a mud has the uh, has been the primary barrier. Uh, so okay. hydrostatic had is don't have a seal. So okay. can we call it as a primary barrier or not? Yeah, and drilling the primary barrier will be the hydrostatic for the mud. Why? Because the mud weight create hydrostatic head inside the top for the perforation or for formation higher than the formation pressure, which is called overbalance situation. Minimum requirement for overbalance is 200 PSI according to the API requirement. This is called also hydrostatic barrier and this sealing barrier because it is sealed the pressure for the formation, okay? Uh, secondary barrier here, it will be the POP. Okay, this is a normal while drilling. For tertiary barrier while drilling, it will drill another well, which is called the relief well, to control the kicking zone from the bottom. But here, with the barrier classification, primary, secondary, tertiary, we uh, focus here on well intervention, processing, or operation. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Let's uh, go ahead and see the difference here between numbers for barriers in drilling and well intervention operation. Look to these two figures. You will find at the left here in drilling operation, usually, we usually use double barrier protection. It start from bottom to top. So this is the formation level or formation pressure. We need to have mud column for hydrostatic head. This is the primary barrier mud while drilling. 
higher than its pressure, the formation pressure, which is called overbalanced situation. If you have any drop in the level here or any contamination or drop in the mud weight, so your formation pressure become higher than, this is the kick situation, become higher than the hydrostatic phase for the mud. So we have another barrier, which is called secondary barrier. You start to close annular preventer or pipe ramp to seal the wheel pool. So here it starts from top, from bottom to top for sealing, primary and secondary. In wheel intervention or wheel surfacing, it is different little bit. You need to have triple barrier protection. Why? Because usually all or most wheel intervention operation will be under pressure, under in life wheel, I mean. So if you look here, you will find you have pressure here at the surface while working. So the first barrier, it will be from top to bottom, not from bottom to top like drilling. So the primary barrier here will be stripper in case of uh, cold tubing operation. And if you have failed in the stripper, you have leak. So you stop cold tubing movement. Then you start to activate the secondary barrier, which is the POP or blowout preventer. If you have any leaks in the blowout preventer, so we'll go to tertiary barrier. You will cut and shear the cold tubing and the drop in the hole. And after that, close the Christmas tree valve to secure the pressure from the well. So here it is triple production, but in drilling, it is double pro uh, production. And this is the minimum requirement according to the API. In some drilling operation, we can use more than double protection according to the operation or the policy for the company. Okay. Barrier types. You have first one is mechanical barrier piece for equipment. We have two classification under the mechanical barrier. First one is closed type, and second one is closable type. What is the difference between closed mechanical barrier and the closable mechanical barrier? What do you think? Uh, closed type means uh, if uh, like this uh, pipe ramps and the closable type means we have a dynamic seal or such kind of barrier. No, actually it's not like this. Closed barrier from its name, it is closed. It's shaped closed from beginning to the end during all operation inside the wood. Like a plug. Like plugs, like a stripper yeah. assembly in the cold tubing operation. It is it has come closed around the cold tubing to seal while movement or dynamic position and static condition. So it is called closed pipe. We cannot control closing and opening this pipe for carrier. This is the meaning closed through our operation. Closable pipe, you have option to open and to close. You have extra source or external source to close and open when, when you need, like the POP, blowout preventer, you can use the source for the hydraulic pressures or hydraulic fluid to open and close when you need, like also Christmas tree valves by hand. You can close or if it is hydraulic or pneumatic type, like upper master valve. So it is closed when required. This is the difference between closed and the closable type. The another barrier or second one is the hydrostatic barrier. This is the usually liquid to give hydrostatic head criteria, 200 PSI minimum requirement above the PF, which is the formation pressure. And the same time it will be below PFF. This is fracture pressure for the formation. And must to be observable from the surface. You need to see the level, it's static from the surface of the well to confirm the hydrostatic head or the fluid as hydrostatic barrier. This is the two criteria according to mechanical and hydrostatic barrier. So let's look here. What is the main advantage and disadvantage for mechanical barrier? Usually, if you look to this sketch or schematic, 
you will find here there is thread string or tubing string here. You have pucker above the perforation, and you have plug here in the tail pipe for the production. And this is the isolation, the formation, this wire line plug in the tail. And you have downhole safety valve here below the surface, Christmas tree casing, and well, and this is rigging up for the wire line, puffing box, the ceiling barrier, first one, and the POB is the secondary barrier, and you have wheel head pressure, you work under pressure. So if you put here the mechanical barrier and wheel pour and deplete of the pressure above, so the advantage here for mechanical barrier, eliminate formation damage. What is the meaning of eliminate formation damage? That, that means you don't need to kill the wheel. Killing the wheel with prime or completion prime may, if it is not compatible with the formation fluid composition, it can make source for the damage to the formation. That's why the advantage here, don't use any fluid inside the wheel pour, eliminate the formation damage, and also cost effective. Less cost, you don't need to get extra bump and the storage tank and the mixer and the fluid to pump kill mud before you going to do some job inside the well. The disadvantage here, you're working long time under pressure. You have surface will head pressure, so you have risk, you work under pressure. This is the main disadvantage. If you look for the reverse, the hydrostatic barrier here, so in the right here figure, you have dead well. You pump already mud or kill fluid inside the well pool to control the formation pressure. So the main advantage using hydrostatic barrier, you're working zero well head pressure, save operation. The disadvantage here is the advantage for uh, mechanical barrier, you have high potential for formation damage if your uh, fluid or compression or kill fluid is not compatible and make contact with the formation fluid. This is main advantage and disadvantage using mechanical and hydrostatic barrier. Uh, Hanik, uh, can you repeat the uh, mechanical barrier disadvantage? How, how we are working uh, under pressure? Yes. Usually, yes. If, if you put here this uh, wire line plug, you still have pressure inside the string. So you work under pressure. You don't need to bleed off all the pressure to zero. So you still have some pressure inside the wheel pour. Or if you have communication below the wire line plug for any reason, you have pressure coming from the well. But here, you kill the wheel first before you're working on it. So you have safe operation, zero wheel head pressure during the wire line or cold tubing operation. But in this case, you have more cost because you have regular operation for killing operation with uh, pump and uh, tankers and uh, mixing and like this. And you have also potential, high potential for formation damage. If you not choose compatible fluid, kill fluid with the formation characteristics or formation composition, you will have some skin factor or damage in, in, inside your well pour, which can reduce the permeability for the formation. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Let's look to this uh, table. This is some uh, examples for barrier here. First one is mechanical barrier. As we said before, closed type and closable type. Closed type, it is closed during all operation. We don't have control to close and open. Like a stuffing box for wire line, like grease injection head for braided line, part from wire line, stripper assemblies for course, our course called tubing, bottom hole check valve, internal barrier during the cold tubing, wireline plugs, different for wireline plugs. This is ice plugs or freezing plug. 
this is part from mechanical close type to seal below the wheel head. For closable type like POB, you can control open and close when you need. Annular preventer, Christmas tree valves, and subsurface safety valve below the uh, wheel head or 300 feet from the surface. Hydrostatic barrier like drilling fluid like mud, over planted fluid or completion fluid, salt water, but also uh, as hydrostatic barrier for killing the well. The subsurface safety valve during well intervention operation, it is considered as barrier or it's only emergency barrier. What do you think? About subsurface safety valve. Emerald, uh, I think it, it, there will be a tertiary barrier. I think since it it can it can be able to cut or cut the intervention service like it it can't be able to cut coil tubing or wire line. So that's why it should be considered as a tertiary barrier. Do you use before subsurface safety valve to cut uh, the wire line or cold tubing? No, no. I, I'm saying it, it can be able to cut it. Okay. The subsurface safety valve, it is valve like flubber valve. It is open. Yeah. One way valve. Uh, it mainly it, it is used for emergency situation, according to the API. Emergency situation that means to shut off the production for the well. If you have fire at the surface or damage to the Christmas tree valve, or you have uh, war like Gulf War, uh, so you if you release the pressure for the subsurface safety valve, it is closed, fail safe. So it will prevent the escape for hydrocarbon to the surface. So it is. Uh, used as emergency barrier. During well intervention operation, we cannot rely on that valve as a barrier. I mean, it is not designed to cut any wire line or cold tubing. If you if you kept open and it's closed and cold tubing inside the hole, it will cause damage to the cold tubing. Actually, it will not be able to cut completely the cold tubing string. And also it will make damage to the valve itself, to the flubber, because it's not designed for cutting. So you need to replacement or make replacement for this valve. So according to the API, it is just only emergency barrier to shut off the flow for the well. It can be used in some situation, emergency during well intervention, just set to close above the, uh, below the well intervention operation, after the well intervention operation above the uh, Christmas tree in case of last option, emergency. But you rely first on the Christmas tree valve plus your uh, pressure equipment at the surface for the rigging up for the cold tube. Okay? This is according yeah. to the API. And, Henny, so it means that if uh, during during any intervention operation, like if we have we have a coil tubing or wire line inside well, then we can say that with the subsurface saf safety well would be our barrier. It, it, if it it is it can be uh, cutting the wire line or uh, coil tubing, and it can. It cannot. It cannot cut coil tubing or wire line. It's not designed yeah, so, to cut. Yeah. So th th which means that th this can be a barrier during any intervention operation. Yeah, it cannot be as a barrier during all intervention operation, right? Yeah, it can it can be a barrier where once you have pulled out the coil tubing or the wire. And an emergency situation is not the first or the second or tertiary barrier. Like if you have, for example, leak on the Christmas tree valves, okay, or your uh, string is hanged on the Christmas tree after you pull out above the subsurface valve. So we need to close the well now. So this is the last option. Yeah, we'll okay. Close okay. the subsurface safety valve to isolate the well poor and make after that inflow test for this barrier to make sure it is not passing any fluid. Okay, after yeah. that, you can work in the Christmas tree. This is the last option. But according to the API, it is used to shut in the flow only during production phase. 
ओके 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 � a uh, how salt water is a closable type and a drilling fluid is a closed type uh, drilling fluid like mud mud during drilling it can be water based mud or oil based mud have hydrostatic head higher than the formation pressure this is while drilling and salt water usually used during completion operation sea water here or you have added some uh, salt to the uh, drill water And this is the overbalanced like completion brine or uh, brine you prefer or mix uh, to increase the mud weight. This is the difference between the three sections here. All this fluid must have overbalance above the formation pressure to consider as hydrostatic barrier and must be visible from the surface to rely on the level or the water or mud inside the well pool. Okay. Okay. Uh, visible from the surface. How can uh, how can it be visible from the surface by calculation or something? No, no. While while drilling, you can see from rig floor inside the well pore from the nipple, from the POB level. Okay. But well intervention okay. operation, you cannot see this level because you have Christmas tree valve. At that time, you cannot rely by your eyes on the hydrostatic head as a barrier. In this case, okay. you need to add more mechanical barrier, two mechanical barrier in place above the hydrostatic barrier to be in safe side. So you rely okay. only in this uh, situation on mechanical barriers, like some plugs and so to isolate the tubing and others. Okay. Like okay, fine. And thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is types for mechanical plugs. If you look here, nibble. Seating plugs can be planking plug, X and X N plug, check valve, one-way valve, pump through, not to give any return. Pump through plug, this is one-way plug also. Pump open plug, this is type for plug after you sit and you drop a uh, plug uh, or ball, you keep pressure to open this type for plug. Pressure cycle plug, this is used for cycling pressure to open the, this plug during the production. Bump out plug, this is called expandable plug. This is two part for plug. You isolate the well pour. If you need to produce from the well, you have source for pressure uh, to operate. So it will become two parts. It will open the pour for the plug from inside to have production through. This is types for the mechanical plug you can set inside the well. This all type, it is nipple seating. It can sit inside the nipple profile. You have another type, it's called tubing plugs. You can sit in the wall for the pipe, internal wall for the pipe. Like mono lock plug for mechanical sound type surface timer setting, that means you have Uh, like uh, Halliburton plug, mono, mono block plug, this can set by the uh, time for setting time at the surface, or another situation, it can be set by jarring up after you set in its depths, and after that you release the pulling or running tool. Another type is called ice plug, is non-conventional plug type, freezing method is not wire line plug, or this type, it is run with wire line. Look here for the freezing plug. You can freeze below, for example, Christmas tree valve on the well head, on the surface casing below the well head. So you have temporary barrier ice plug, usually use a special operation using uh, liquid nitrogen or methanol gas. Uh, and you have wrapping or coil lines around the uh, surface. Uh, Uh, casing from outside, then you start to convert the temperature from outside to inside the well pour. In this case, you will start to freezing the hydrocarbons or any fluid 
you can pump like viscous gel bills inside the or at the surface for the well so it can create hydrate block the hydrate block for for example it can uh, have test on that one up to 15 or 10,000 psi okay it is very solid and it can lift for some time till you are able to remove your christmas tree and nibble off bob for example during the drilling operation or if you need to replace any uh, christmas tree with new one this is unconventional method and last option to use if you are not able to run through the christmas tree bulb or christmas tree to set plugs inside the wheel pool this is option called ice plug and after uh, design time like uh, according to design for example it uh, can sit inside its place for 12 or 10 hours so you do your job after that it is smelled by the atmospheric pressure temperature is not heat by is not by heating this is called freezing method or freezing plug do you work with this type before no no okay in special condition and this plug can be done or performed by third party usually company it's not by the uh, well intervention crew or the rig crew uh, uh, Hannah? yes the freezing plug is set against the uh, bpv valve or, or what kind of the valve it is set against anything or it's just a nitrogen that we can pump into the uh, it, it all is, into the well no you don't pump nitrogen the nitrogen is from outside you cooling the nitrogen okay then you okay. transfer uh, through the coil the uh, the temperature from outside to the fluid inside the well and the surface casing below the christmas tree or well head so the fluid inside the well start to freezing and convert to hydrate plug. So after you sit, you will apply pressure test on the top for the plug according to the design. And after you confirm the plug is holding pressure, then you start to nibble down or remove the Christmas tree or change it the Christmas tree as a surface. After you change it again, it is take time according to the design for this plug to start to melt with the time and you can, you can continue your operation. If you don't have any fluid to the surface, you need to have liquid fluid as a surface like hydrocarbon. If you don't have any fluid on the surface casing below the Christmas tree, you will start to pump some, some viscous gel or fluid inside the wheel pour and start to try to freeze in this fluid and convert to the freeze or ice plug. Okay. Uh, Hane, so it means that like uh, uh, sometimes we we used to give water baths to give temperature to something. Uh, in, in this case, we are giving uh, a kind of a bath of liquid nitrogen to the wellhead, which converts the liquid uh, into the hydrated form into a solid uh, solid uh, which solidified the liquid inside the well. We can yeah. say that. Yeah. Yeah. That is okay. Uh, okay. So uh, if if we if we, if the well is flowing, then there could be a, some temperature of the well bore fluid as well. So how much is the integrity of that hydrate plug uh, that withholds? Like if it, it can hold uh, the temperature of if if we have a flowing condition and you know that it there there is around hundred degree Fahrenheit temperature at the surface more or less. So the it can melt the plug as well according to the temperature on the on the surface or in the well pour estimation is or estimated you can start to make this design you have calculation to design this type for plug okay? Uh, okay according also to the operation what you will do like if you nibble down christmas tree or you need to nibble up your pop for the rig and at this time you need at least 12 hours so you will design this plug to stay in its place holding pressure as freezing plug for 12 hours according to the design. 
after that it will it will start to uh, melt under its uh, surface condition for the temperature if you have short uh, trip like you will only change the christmas tree like five or six hour maximum so you have another design for this type for plug but the integrity for this plug like the mechanical plug like the mechanical bug, it can hold from below and from top uh, high pressure, uh, like up to 15,000 psi in some cases. Okay. So, uh, okay. can you can we pressure test it or not? Yeah, yeah, we pressure test it from top before we remove the Christmas tree. We're going to have pressure from the top for this plug for 15 minutes or 20 minutes to check its integrity, like that barrier completely barrier isolation from top and bottom okay and okay. after that it will we'll start to nibble down the christmas tree or nibble up bub okay it will act same from the top and the bottom yeah it holds the pressure from post direction yeah okay you can Thank make you. like integrity test like you bleed off any pressure above to check was uh, inflow test you can this is the shape for that blood after you remove here the top flange for the Christmas tree, you'll find the plug like this, solid plug, like freeze. Okay, okay, uh, okay. And after twelve hours, it can, uh, it can melt uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, but uh, twelve hours is according to the design. This is for example. Okay. Okay. okay according fine, to the design. Fine. Okay. This solidified plug is uh, uh, solid, uh, solid form of viscous gel. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You can see that. After that, the overbalance we took when you have hydrostatic pressure for the fluid greater than the formation pressure. This is a concept for or definition for the overbalance. Under balance, you have kick situation. So hydrostatic pressure is less than the formation pressure. The balance you have pose is equal. Hydrostatic head for the fluid is equal to the formation pressure. Some types for wireline blood or most of wireline blood is called positive blood. What is the meaning for positive blood? That means it is hold the pressure. You can it is hold the pressure from top and from bottom because sometimes for some time, some bloods is only one side holding pressure, like one way valve or the pump through blood. But most the plugs now we set inside the wheel pool is a positive plug. That means you can pressure test from top and from below, like inflow test, to check its integrity. Formation fracture pressure, that means it is the maximum pressure you can apply to the formation from the surface plus hydrostatic head above the formation before it start to leak or break. This is the uh, definition for formation fracture pressure. Also, another definition is here about the swab and surge pressure. What is what you know about the swab and surge conditions during tripping operation? Any answer? Uh, like during during pulling out of hole, we have a swabbing effect. Uh, there is a, a decrement of uh, hydrostatic head. Uh, that's why we have a swabbing effect. And during running in hole, we have a surging effect. We are, uh, there is an increase in pressure, hydrostatic pressure, which is applying on the formation pressure uh, formation. Okay, so the swabbing while pulling out of hole, that's yeah. why it's called momentary reduction. Because it's come from some uh, conditions like high speed for tripping, narrow adenos between the cold tubing and the uh, pipe for inside the wheel pool. So momentary reduction in bottom hole pressure while pulling out of hole due to high tripping speed, small narrow adenos, and also in case if you have high viscous mud or fluid. This is the swap effect. Usually it's called negative effect or negative pressure. Surge pressure is the reverse momentary increase in bottom hole pressure while running in the well. You have also something called active barrier. What is the meaning for active barrier? Uh, 
like during uh, as a stuffing box during an intervention operation is yeah. connective barrier yeah the barrier are currently in use now during our operation we can rely on that one now during operation like the stripper assembly which is called now as primary active barrier and the pop in this case it will call as secondary non active barrier because it is not using during the normal operation if you start to activate the pop it will start to sit as secondary active barrier that i use now during the operation definition is called permanent barrier something permanent inside the well pore set inside the well like the unperforated casing before you going to perforate and you have communication between the perforation or formation behind and the well pore this is the permanent barrier temporary barrier any barrier you use during for short time or long time and after that you will start to remove from the well head like stripper assembly like the pop lubricators also anything for the pressure control equipment during the coil tubing it's called temporary barrier barrier envelopes thus refer to using groups from the barrier acting together against the pressure for the well this is the meaning for barrier envelope barrier is a group for individual barrier acting together to seal the pressure from the formation for example here if you look here for this is rigging up this rigging up for the slick line stuffing box like the stripper assembly and cold tubing lubricators and the pop is the secondary barrier above the christmas tree here the stuffing box lubricator envelope this is group contain three parts contain the pop and lubricators is part from pressure control equipment is hold the pressure for the well during operation and the stuffing box this is called barrier envelope here you have well if you look here packer tubing envelope what is the component or elements for barrier contain the pressure from the coming from the well through the production pipe to the surface to hold the pressure during the passing from bottom to top it is packer tubing envelope so it will start with packer sealing any fluid coming through the pipe to not come to the annulus and the tubing here second one tubing accessories that mean nipples and ssd and subsurface safety valve this is called tubing accessories and tubing hanger at the surface to pass the fluid through with high pressure and the christmas tree at the surface to control the flow for the well so this is called tubing packer envelope contain some barrier packer tubing tubing accessories tubing hanger and christmas tree if you check now at the annulus area production casing envelope what is the barrier element in the annulus it can hold the pressure of the well if you have any leak so it can be outside now tubing it can be production casing sealing any pressure to come behind at the surface side outlet valve to control the pressure for the well and the isolate tubing hanger tubing hanger seal it is our packing element sealed any pressure to come through from outside tubing head and casing head housing which is the uh, uh, casing uh, spool and tubing spool valves at the surface this is in the annulus area or production casing envelope so now how we can pressure test the barrier we said the barrier will not be considered to use as a barrier during any operation 
till it is passed the pressure test and check our or its integrity. You have two type for pressure test barrier. What is the two type for pressure test? Positive test and negative test. Yeah, positive test and negative test. How we can apply the positive test? Or what is the meaning for positive test? By applying pressure from surface through a, by means of a pump. Okay. So you apply pressure from external source from the pump. So at the surface for the barrier or the plug, you have pressure on the top for the barrier higher than from below, from the formation side. So in this case, it's called positive test. And all the pressure must be recorded on a chart is for minimum 15 minutes or according to the policy for the company. After that, you start to bleed off the pressure to zero and it is confirmed as whole as a successful test. This is the first way to pressure test any barrier. The another way or the second way is called negative test or sometimes inflow test or in some, com some company policy it's called dry test. Okay. At that time, you have pressure from below the blood formation side higher than from the top of the barrier. You can displace the fluid above the plug or the barrier to uh, light mud or light fluid like water, or in some cases, you bleed off any pressure gradually above the plug and monitor at the gauge any pressure build up. If you don't have any pressure build up for 15 minutes uh, minimum requirement, so you will record this plug is or successful or holding barrier. If you have pressure build up at the surface, that means there is communication through the blood coming from the formation below. At that time, you will start to bleed off and try to pressure test again. Finally, if the blood is not holding pressure, you need to replace it immediately or you have to repair this type for the plug. Which type for this pressure test is recommended to start with or according to the API, which, which we prefer to start with or to use? Which type for pressure test? Positive or negative test? Um, if we negative. sorry, I guess negative tests, inflow tests are more recommended in the uh, uh, well intervention jobs. Why? Because well, well always comes from inside the well. Uh, uh, pressure always came from inside the well. And we have to perform the inflow test because uh, well can apply pressure uh, on the pressure control equipment from uh, from inside, from not not from the outside. So the negative test is the more more recommended uh, pressure test. Usually, the negative test all the way is recommended to apply because it is in the same direction for the flow of the formation. Okay. That's why we recommend to go with the negative test. If you set plug, you will start to displace fluid above to light fluid or water, and you're monitoring the build up at the surface gauge to check the integrity by a negative way. Why? Because it is the same direction for the flow. But for any reason, if you cannot apply the negative test, so you have the another option to apply the positive test. At least you need to pressure test you must pressure test your barrier and it is check its integrity before you go going to open the well and you start your cold tubing operation. So you will not rely on the pressure for the well to pressure test pressure control equipment for cold tubing. You will pressure by external source to check its integrity. After that, you will start to open the well. Okay? Yeah. So in, uh, so in our case, positive pressure test would be more recommended. Sorry? Uh, I'm saying that 
uh, in our case uh, like in the case for coil tubing positive pressure test would be more recommended since we need to test the barrier first and then expose it to the pressure of barrier. yeah but when you pressure test the barrier like uh, uh, bv ramps for example you pressure test from below right yeah from the yeah. same direction so you make in this case also like negative test the pressure from below will be higher from the top so a pressure test also from direction for the flow mm -hmm. okay, okay so you apply negative test also from below for the uh, rams you cannot pressure test pipe rams from the top because pipe ram it is designed to hold the pressure from below only that's why you will uh, after when you go to cold tubing part you will see the procedure for how to pressure test the uh, barriers or pressure control equipment okay but here we talk about some plugs inside the wheel pool. So at this at that time, you need to negative test or inflow test the plug because this is the same direction. If you have failed, the flow will come in from below to the top. But any for any reason, if you cannot apply or bleed off the pressure, you will apply positive test from the top to check the integrity for the ferry. Okay. okay, fine, uh, Hani. There was a question at the last line. Okay, go ahead. Can you go to the previous slide? So, yeah. what should we do if the barrier fail in a pressure test? Do we Tell need me. to replace it, or what? What we can do? Yeah. Is there if, any other option? If this one is down hole, you will, uh, for example, cement the plug. Okay, it is. It is not holding the pressure from below. So. You can drill the cement plug and set another one, or you can set another cement plug on the top of the previous one. Okay. If this, for example, uh, bridge plug, you will replace the bridge plug with new one. So you need to uh, recover that one and set new one, or set another cement uh, uh, plug above the previous one. But you need to find way to set one successful tested barrier. If it is BOB at the surface, for example, rams or something, you need to replace it or repair and you retest again, okay? Okay, fine, thank you. Okay, thanks. Barrier integrity, that means checking the barrier, it is hold the pressure. We have some checking for mechanical barrier, must be tested from direction for the flow. We prefer the negative test. For mechanical closed barrier, must be leak tight. That means no passing for the fluid or the pressure. This is the for mechanical closed barrier. It must be leak tight. For mechanical closable barrier, especially here we'll talk about the subsurface safety valve in some criteria. This is called ABI 14B. This is the name for the ABI criteria. Talking about in subsurface safety valve, if you are going to use it as, uh, not as primary barrier, it's used as secondary barrier, you can have some acceptable limit for leakage through the subsurface safety valve. Like in oil well, 400 centimeter cubic per one minute, or 900 standard cubic feet per one hour in gas well. This is the acceptable limit if you are using the subsurface safety valve only as closable barrier during the operation, but is not primary barrier as, for example, secondary barrier. And in some policy for company, we will not apply this barrier. This is just recommendation or criteria. In some company, if you are going to use a subsurface safety valve, it must be leak tight like closed barrier. Okay. This is criteria you can find in some manual. Apply only for subsurface safety valve, is not for the valve for Christmas tree, for example. This only for subsurface safety valve. For uh, Christmas tree valves, it must be leak tight without any leakage through the valve when it is closed. Hydrostatic barrier, it must be have higher 
pressure than the formation, and it must be monitoring for periods for time at the surface to ensure any thermal expansion or contraction effect have been killed or uh, gone, and must be observable all the time to consider as the barrier. During well intervention, we cannot rely on hydrostatic uh, uh, fluid as a barrier because we cannot check from the surface. We cannot know now where the level. You can have some losses inside the well. After that, can we'll... I, can I yeah. have a question in the last slide? Uh, in mechanical closable barriers, we have the criteria of 400 cubic centimeter per minute of oil, 400 cubic centimeter of oil, or 900 SCF per hour of gas. Uh, I think this is the negative pressure test. Yeah, this is negative pressure test, yeah. You close yeah, the no. subsurface safety valve, and okay. if you have this 400 centimeter cubic per minute from oil well leakage, you can accept this uh, subsurface safety valve as a barrier, but only it is secondary barrier, it's not primary barrier. This is the recommendation according to the API 14B. If you need to look for this, EBI, you can search on or Google on that one. But uh, okay. in gas, 900 centimeter cubic per one hour. But I think most of company now have restriction more in subsurface safety valve to consider as leak tight during the integrity or check the integrity for the inflow test. So what, 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 is the, what is the standard for uh, the pressure test? Like how much uh, drop in pressure is acceptable for a barrier. Uh, is there any standard for API from API? According to the API, there is not the specific uh, numbers for the uh, pressure drop. But for example, if you have pressure test on the Christmas tree valves, okay, uh, yeah. you, you can have uh, pressure drop uh, in value, but at least the pressure drop will stop then you have solid line, the remaining for the pressure test. It will be mm -hmm. acceptable by this way. But if you have drop and continuous dropping in the, in, the, in the graph or a chart, it will not consider as a barrier. The 15 minute we said minimum requirement, it must be solid line for the pressure test with no or with no, without any drops in the line. This is meaning Thank for you. check integrity. Okay, I, I get your point. But if we are uh, pressure testing a Christmas tree, like if we are uh, doing a pressure test of Christmas tree at 10,000 PSI, and we have a minor drop of pressure of around uh, 400 or 300 PSI in 15 minutes, is it acceptable or not? Okay, in 15 minutes, after that is stop, or every 15 minutes you have pressure drop? Like we have, we have a pressure drop of 300 PSI in 15 minutes. Okay, after the next 15 minutes, the pressure drop continues every 15 minutes. We have, we'll we have performed, a, no, we have performed the pressure test only for 15 minutes. And oh. observed that there is a decree, decrement of 300 PSI in that 15 minutes. Okay. We had don't uh, proceed for the next 15 minutes. So is it acceptable or not? No, it's not acceptable. You need to wait another 15 minutes to check okay. it is it is a static line or solid line for pressure test without any drop or not. Because the 15 minutes here, according mm -hmm. or 10 minutes or 20 minutes, according to the policy for your company, it should be or must be straight line. But in your 15 minutes, the pressure start to drop 300 PSI. So the chart yes. is recording the pressure dropping. If you have yes. failed in this period during the operation, it will pack on the company man or the uh, or or a new or will intervention operation. Why? Because the graph for pressure test is not solid line. You need to have solid line after this pressure test 300. May you have in the system some air? Okay. So mm -hmm. the pressure start to drop 300 psi. After 300 psi, it will be solid line for like 20 minutes. This is acceptable test. Or in some company, you need. To go back again, increase the 300 PSI to like to 10,000 again back, then you yeah. hold as straight line or solid line. Okay, so you mean uh, what you uh, what I grasped is there isn't any standard international standard 
related to this drop in pressure for pressure actually pressure. For, for for numbers because uh, uh, you we don't have actually numbers for because this is very from uh, value to value for pressure test and what is your pressure test and what is the fluid you use for pressure test the okay. so the, 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 there isn't any percentage for that as well like if we are doing a pressure test of 10,000 psi if we have a drop of 250 psi in 15 minutes that is acceptable not there isn't anything like uh, like a standard from api uh, related to this pressure test actually i, I don't have exact number but what i can say Usually, while pressure test, if you have uh, high uh, velocity for pumping or uh, for pressure pressure up, and you don't take the air out from the system in the beginning, you will for yeah. sure you will have some pressure drop because you have you, your fluid start to compress. So at this moment you will have some pressure drop, but yeah. after this pressure drop you can increase say, the same pressure up. And you can hold for a straight line or for at least 15 minutes or 20 minutes. This is the way to, to accept the criteria with a solid line for pressure test. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, Hannah? Yeah. Uh, my name, my name is, uh, is Hany. Okay. Hany. Hany. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you. What's uh, your second name so that uh, 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 Hany, can call you? Uh, Hani Ahmed. Hani Ahmed. Okay, we will call you Ahmed. That, no that's problem. Sound good. <laughs> no problem. Okay, can you go to the previous slide? Yeah, yes. Uh, there is the point number three, mechanical closable barrier, in which we you have written that only if it is used as a secondary barrier, not the primary barrier. For okay. subsurface safety wall. Uh, uh, okay, for uh, applied only for subsurface safety wall. Yeah. So if the secondary barrier is uh, triple SV, then what will be the first barrier? Is it, 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 it will be the uh, fluid or it will be the any surface uh, surface barrier? It will be any surface above. It will be like yeah. Christmas tree valves, for example, as a surface. Okay, fine. Fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. After that, we'll go to talk about some calculation and formula. I will share, first we'll talk about the, the pressure. So we have equation to the hydrostatic pressure, how we can calculate the hydrostatic pressure inside the well during the static Ahmed, condition. Yeah. But can we have a five minute break so that we can go to washroom? And five minutes? Yeah, five minutes, only five minutes. Okay, we can have, okay. We can stop for okay, break for five minutes, no problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 